Sometimes you embark on a journey that you thought was a good idea at the time, but halfway through, you start to question your sanity. Well, I can safely say that is not the case here because I'm f***ing stoked on this build. Last episode, we made custom frame rails in our 2001 CE Lancer and officially mounted our Nissan CA18 DET motor in the engine bay. Now it's time to get cutting as we make room for our rear wheel drive gearbox. So a couple of updates and responses to your guys' comments and questions from the last video. A bunch of you guys asked, am I going to put the crush tube in the frame rail? The answer is absolutely we are. So crush tube is going to go in with the subframe bolts to, crush tube is going to go in where our caster arms bolt to. We're also going to gusset the frame rail where it meets the body of the car and triangulate where we need to and we'll also run sheet metal along here to really tidy the engine bay up and make it look almost like it's factory kind of setup. At the moment with the blue bars and everything, obviously it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, looks a bit funky, but trust me, by the end of this process, with our radiators and everything's all mounted super nice, it's all painted, it's gonna look like it was supposed to be there from factory. Also, some of you guys with a keen eye would notice we have a turbo manifold on our CA18 DET motor. How good does that freaking look? I found this on Marketplace for $300 and I could not resist buying it because even if it, we weren't gonna use it, I mean, that's pretty cheap. Uh, and instantly when I fit it up, I saw that this uh, stud right here hits the manifold so you can't even bolt it up properly. It's an Autobard 88 one. I know that a couple of people used to use them back in the day. It's a China manifold, um, but obviously you probably need to cut that stud. But what I was thinking we we're gonna do is we'll cut the whole thing off the flange and we're gonna flip it up and run it top mount because I reckon in this engine bay, with this engine and how it all looks, we need to have the turbo top mounted here just to show the whole setup off. And I'm sure you guys agree with me. You know, we need to have this engine bay popping. So for today's episode, we're getting cutting on the car. Clearly, we're gonna have to chop a tunnel into this car for the gearbox because as it sits, it's got a baby tunnel in there, but it's not big enough for what we want. So basically what we have to do, mark a spot on the firewall and we're gonna have to pull the motor out and start looking at cutting the car up. First things first though, we're gonna strip out the interior. So let's get into it. We start by removing the seats, center console and the carpet to see what needs to be cut out to fit this big ass rear wheel drive gearbox in our tiny front wheel drive tunnel. For the 69th time, we are taking the motor out of the car because we obviously need to get to the firewall. So I've marked on the firewall where we'll need to cut. So we'll take the motor out and then we're gonna assess everything we have to kind of move out of our way on the firewall and go from there. So time to come out, buddy. It's no surprise with a build like this, the engine and gearbox are constantly being removed from the engine bay as we take measurements and make modifications. We're removing the fuel and brake lines from the firewall as well as the sound deadening and the nerves start to build as we prepare to make our first cut. Wish me luck. <laughs> Hopefully this goes the way we expect it to go. Hello there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our first hole is cut, look at that. Woo! We've still got a lot of cutting ahead of us and there's every potential that I'll have to go higher here. As you can see, there's an air box right there. That air box potentially will not survive this operation, but we will see how we go. So now I'm gonna cut all the way down here. As you can see, I kind of started already. Um, so we're gonna go all the way down the middle and then I'm going to put the gearbox onto the motor and slide it back into the hole and kind of see where it's fouling and if it's fouling on everything. I'm also gonna to have to undo all the brake lines here because um, this block is quite chunky and right where our kind of motor sits and stuff so it's just not gonna work. But that's all good because we can do some custom brake lines there and that'll work when we install the hydraulic handbrake in this car. Look at that. Goodbye tunnel. Big gearbox tunnel guy. Not gonna lie, that was a pretty big effort, but that is because I'm an idiot and I didn't get new uh, saw blades for the metal cutting saw, whatever you call them. So I was cutting with a blunt blade and it was a bit rough. I had to actually use the grinder for a little bit inside the cabin there. A little bit dodgy, but you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. It worked out pretty well in the end. So I'm just gonna trim up a couple of things here and then I'm gonna throw the gearbox onto our CA18 motor and we're gonna put it back into the engine bay and see if we've cut enough out, there's every chance that we have to cut more out, but the heater box is definitely gonna have to go, so RIP at some point, but let's put the gearbox and kind of see where it sits. I'm 
just excited to see where the shifter sits if I'm honest. So uh, let's get it in. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it may have looked like that happened quite quickly on the time lapse. It did not. It took me like an hour to get that in place because I had to kind of go back, cut a little bit out, go forward, go back, bang some with the hammer, go forward. It was pretty gnarly, so very time consuming and difficult job, but I was not willing to give up. Pushed on, and we have our engine sitting in the bay on its wooden mounts. If you didn't see the last video, they're temporary. Do not panic, our actual engine mounts are on the way. With the gearbox in the car, and we have some really good news, I would say. So, first things first, all of our measuring paid off when we put the motor in the car. And that is because our gearbox is nice and flat. So it's not sitting on an angle or anything like that with our engine on the mounts, which means we got all of that correct. It's also sitting center in the bay, which is also nice. So this is how it looks as it's sitting in the car at the moment. Now, a few things to note here. We will likely have to remove the dash. That's fine. I kind of expected it. And we're gonna have to do something about the airbox in the car for sure. The shifter is sitting at a really nice height, almost in the exact same position, I would say, as the old stock shifter. So there's a chance even, once we put our new tunnel in, that we can even use our old center console stuff and make it all work. So it's actually sitting at a really nice height, which is really great news because there was a chance that it really could have come out anywhere. So as you can see, we're going to have to cut out the rest of the tunnel all the way to the back. Although to be honest, it's not really that much further to go to the back anyway. And here, I feel like what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut heaps more out. And that's just because if we ever wanna pull the gearbox at the track so we blow the gearbox or something and we want to put a new gearbox on we want to be able to pull it out of the track and as it sits you wouldn't be able to do that so a couple of things we still need to do which means the engine will come back out but i'm knackered i've had enough for the night so we'll come back tomorrow and we'll keep kicking on i'm trying to get this video done for you guys and up for the weekend because i'm headed to the formula one this weekend therefore i don't have a lot of time but this is a huge milestone we got the motor in the car with the gearbox and it's really coming along super nicely now so i'll see you guys tomorrow bright eyed and bushy tailed and we're gonna get straight back into this thing see you in the morning Bye. So I've come back with a fresh mind after a good sleep and I was thinking last night, I think we need to remove the dash. I neglected you guys. Off camera, I did a little bit of work, bit the bullet, and we are pulling the dash out of the car. It's just gonna make our lives so much easier. And it actually turned out to be a super simple process. 10 mil here, 10 mil here, 10 mil here. Same again on the other side. Had to take the electronics out, unclip the dash. Uh, it's all just plug and play, it's so easy. And then this thing's literally just gonna lift out. So we're gonna take that out now. That is gonna give us a clearer picture as to what we need to do from here up front to kind of make this all work. And then I've gotten some new blades for my saw so we can go ahead, we're gonna rip the rear seat out and we can take the whole, we're gonna cut the whole center of the car out back to where the diff will be. So dash out time, let's go. Doing something like removing a dash can seem like a scary prospect and that's probably why I've avoided removing a dash for the whole 20 years that I've been working on cars. Once we got the dash out, I removed the heater core and all of its components and we finally got our first look at what we were dealing with. First ever dash removal. Done! I've got to take the rest of this stuff out. Bit of magic, ready? Three, two, one. Look at that. Sometimes in order to go forwards, you must go backwards. And we have a completely stripped car. I've got to say, I wasn't anticipating completely stripping the car when we started this, but I'm always a positive person. So I'm like, ah, we'll get away with leaving the dash in and we'll get away with, we probably won't even have to make a tunnel. Okay, Mike, good job, mate, because we definitely do have to make a tunnel. So next up, let's cut this bit out of the center here. Let's get shopping. Dang. So we've got this crazy hole cut in this car. I mean, when you start something like this, you don't anticipate that you're gonna cut so much out, but we've got the engine sitting so low in the engine bay. And then look how freaking much we still have to cut off. Like it looks high as when it's in the car, which is crazy. But we're gonna start making the gearbox tunnel now, which is fairly exciting. So we've got our sheet metal over here. So no time like the present, let's get into it. After finalizing the measurements for our gearbox tunnel, I'm marking up our sheet metal, ready to be cut and bent. We're using an unorthodox method to bend the sheet metal as we don't have a proper bender. It's all about being versatile and using what we have available to make it all work. So our first part of our tunnel is cut. As you saw, we got pretty versatile. 
with our tooling. So here's what it looks like as it sits. So I've just slipped it over. Looks like it's gonna fit super nicely, which is really cool. As you can see, I've drawn up a couple of notches that we need to make here and on the other side. And that way it can slide back over where we need it because I was aiming to have it finish here. And then the next part of the tunnel, obviously is gonna be skinnier back through here as it just has to house the drive shaft. So we'll go ahead and make those notches and then we can go ahead and tack weld this part of the tunnel into the car. Of course, we also need to hole saw our hole in the top of this for our shifter. So it's all looking really awesome and I'm pretty darn proud of this so far. We'll just use a bit of the YouTube magic to get these notches done. Look at that. All of a sudden it's in the right place. We're gonna go ahead and get the welder and let's take this bad boy in. First part of our tunnel is in. Look at that, looking pretty good. I'll show you the other side. There's still a long way to go, obviously. Like I'm gonna do it in sections. So I'll do one section up and then I'll do this section here, the same thing on the other side. And that'll be like that done. And then down here, we're gonna notch down and then come flat all the way back to pretty much level with up here. So we'll cut this up a little bit higher. Um, the diff will sit back there and then obviously drive shaft will come to the gearbox here. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for for this video. I would have loved to have gotten more done, but I also want to have a video out for you guys on Sunday. And you do not want to rush these things. You've got to get it right. So let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see the rest of this gearbox tunnel process or whether you would just like to move on to the rear subframe process in the next video uh, because there's every chance that I'll go ahead, smash the rest of this out off camera the tunnel so that that's all done because it's all fairly straightforward stuff it's much of the same as what you've already seen once that's done i can move on to the rear subframe i'm enjoying the hell out of this build it is so just fun learning all these new things i can tell you guys are enjoying it too if you are please share these videos with a friend if you think they'll enjoy it as well let's grow the channel it's going so well at the moment i appreciate all your feedback on the new video style thank you guys as always for your support thank you for watching hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one where we continue on on the budget evo rear wheel drive swap cheers guys you peace bye